Hello and welcome to another episode of Chairlift Philosophy. Have you ever looked back on the decisions you've made in your life and thought, how could I have done that differently? Are you completely determined by your genetics and your environment? Or is there something else making decisions independently? If you think on the balance of your desires, you would have chosen the same thing. Even the small decisions you make throughout the day, would you have made the same decisions given the state you're in? In philosophy, we would call this whether you have free will or not. Now, there are many philosophers who argue that you don't. And in particular, I'm going to point you to a YouTuber called Cosmic Skeptic. And if you can check out his videos before this one, that would be great. But if not, I'll go through his arguments just to clarify. Uh, also inspired by Sam Harris as well, has made a lot of arguments along the same thread. Essentially, the argument against free will goes like this. Only two things direct purposeful action. Your wants or compulsion and in neither case are you in control of what that is you cannot control what you want and you cannot control what you're compelled to do often because it's something that you want to do either to avoid punishment or a threat and if you cannot control what you want and your wants determine your actions then you're not in control of your actions let's take an example so say you decided to leave your house and go for a walk uh, given no one compelled you to go for a walk say you went for a walk because you wanted to but do you have any say of whether you wanted to go for a walk or not maybe you're quite tired and you thought well a walk would be good for you so you went anyway but did you have any say over whether you think a walk is good for you or for me to get in depth into my arguments if a wife your does exist I'm gonna have to define some terms determinism strictly speaking is given all the past laws and facts there is only one possible future. So everything that is going to happen will have always happened. Everything that did happen was always going to happen. There's only one possible timeline and it's all determined. That's kind of determined. One cause causes the next and the next thing and it causes one long causal chain. The next uh, two positions I'll define will be compatibilism and incompatibilism. And this is quite simple actually. It's whether the view of determinism, which I just defined, is compatible or not with the idea of free will. So if you're a compatibilist, you believe that determinism is compatible with free will. They can both coexist at the same time. They're not uh, logically independent of each other. They're not mutually exclusive. Uh, if you're an incompatibilist, on the other hand, then you believe that free will and determinism can't both pertain at the same time. So if the world is deterministic, there's no free will. There are many definitions of free will. One of the most popular definitions that a lot of incompatibilists use as well is so freedom to have done otherwise. This is quite intuitive. This is, i.e. if you could rewind the clock, you could have done something differently. That's a very common conception of freedom. Uh, another idea of freedom might be the Hobbesian negative conception. So this would be something like freedom from constraint. And Hobbes was a compatibilist, so this is quite a broad definition. So as long as you're not compelled to do something, as long as you're doing what you want, Hobbes would argue you have free will. Uh, the definition that I will go for, though, will be the Kantian positive definition. This is going to be that your will is such that it is a law unto yourself, or a kind of autonomy uh, over your actions. So this is more in line with the idea of control and that would be the words I'll be using like free will in line with controlling what you're doing. So a common incompatibilist argument is always harkening back to the origin of the universe and how if there is one causal chain i.e. a deterministic universe then everything you do is kind of a result of those initial conditions and if they are a result of those initial conditions then 
you don't have any control over what you're doing because it's those initial conditions that are doing the causal lifting, so to speak. But this argument seems to be equivocating on the idea of free will. So they seem to be talking about free will in one sense and what you have control over, and then the, the conditions for which you have free will, which I think are a separate thing, and they're equivocating over these two ideas. So. As an example, let's let's take a TV remote. And if I were to give you a TV remote, you'd have control over the TV. You could choose which channels to go, even if you wouldn't have had that control if I hadn't given it to you. So the conditions for your control were given to you by me, but you're still in control. You know, there's no problem with this idea in, in this example where the person with the TV remote could be, still be in control, even if they don't have control over the conditions. Furthermore, incapacitors often also argue that randomness isn't sufficient for free will, as in random behaviour, something that isn't determined, doesn't give you free will. And I tend to agree with them. However, I'm not sure how they can justify this claim, as if, as if free will is nothing but the freedom to do otherwise. It seems our only plausible candidate is random behaviour, as that's the only thing that really is probabilistic and could result in multiple eventualities making randomness the only thing that is free to behave otherwise. If you read around the clock on something that's random, you often get different results. And so the arguments for incompatibilism seems to be question-begging as well, because if we're saying that determinism is incompatible with freedom to do otherwise, aka random behaviour, then of course it is, because determinism and randomness are kind of at odds with each other by definition. So we kind of define our terms to, to make free will incompatible with determinism. This is the fundamental incompatibilist confusion. Free will must be unconstrained in all regards and yet be completely determined by the self. In order to be free in the given moment, you have to be in control of the means of your freedom. So every condition in the universe, going back to the initial conditions, you must be in control of them, i.e. you have to be God in order to be free. And even then, with this definition, you can't be free because God has to behave in a certain way in, in accordance with his nature, and he is a necessary being, so he can't act otherwise to what God must do. So look at arguments such as the paradox of the stone or the use of the throw dilemma that kind of explores that idea a bit. So in response, I'd issue the incompatibilist challenge where I'd say, if, if freedom does not pertain during determinism, and if it does not pertain during indeterminism, when does it pertain? And if it doesn't, then does that mean it's logically impossible? And if we're going to say freedom is logically impossible, we have a lot of explaining to do because it's a very powerful intuition. And usually philosophers would say that if something is at least conceivable, then it should be possible. You know, logical impossibility is usually reserved for things that are inconceivable, such as round squares or equating the number three to the number four. You know, this is, these are logical inconceivabilities. Free will doesn't seem to fit into that category. So we need the incompatibilists to explain themselves here. So that concludes my argument against the tricky definitions of free will. Uh, now I'm gonna make a separate argument about competing intuitions and the epistemic importance of the intuition of free will. The first argument I'd make is that free will is so intuitively obvious that it outweighs the intuition of the countervailing argument, i.e. the indeterminist argument. The reason being, for one at least, is that the indeterminist argument relies heavily on the concept of causation. And there's been lots of sceptics of causation in the past, notably David Hume, but I would say causation isn't an immediately obvious idea of two things interacting in the universe, and we, we attribute a thing of causation to them. However, causation is most obvious through the idea of free will, as we enact our will upon the world and that causes an action. So in this sense, I say free will precedes causation in, a, in an epistemic sense. We, if we're gonna be skeptical of free will, we're gonna be, have to be skeptical of many more epistemic um, norms as well, especially causation. So the second epistemic argument I would make is about responsibility and how f lack of free will undermines uh, moral responsibility and a fortiori rational responsibility. So, so why does a lack of free will undermine responsibility? Well, it's, it seems like a straightforward argument to be fair. It's if you're not the reason for your actions 
occurring, i.e. there's no autonomous free will making those decisions, it's rather all a result of prior conditions, i.e. we can alleviate responsibility the same way we can alleviate responsibility for children or someone with mental disease. It's the same for us because we're predetermined, we are, all our actions are explained by some prior states. So what this means is that we lose responsibility for what we do. This is a very popular criticism of uh, skeptics of free will because it's unclear why we punish criminals if they're not the reason that they committed the crime. So that's the first link, that free will undermines moral responsibility. So I would go further than that. I would say free will also undermines rational responsibility. Because if we can't be held responsible for our moral beliefs and actions, then how can we be held responsible for our beliefs or, or rational claims? This you can't have one and not the other in a sense. So a lack of free will undermines our rational responsibility and therefore it makes all argumentation superfluous because you, you don't have to justify your claims. If you have no responsibility to your beliefs, then justification is unnecessary. So in this sense, a lack of free will undermines our rationality and our ability to have these arguments because we assume that we're autonomous agents that can justify our claims, but we can't be held to account if we do not already have free will. So this brings me to my media moment and for free will and responsibility that it was actually quite difficult to find uh, the right media that talks about uh, the philosophical concepts in a more a, a less superficial way. Candidates I was considering would have been a really good film Looper, um, there's also uh, the book and recent film Dune which has got a lot of uh, foreknowledge it invested in the story and Groundhog Day is a very interesting uh, consideration with Bill Murray as he's living the same day over and over again and whether we you know behave differently but for my media moment I'm gonna go for the short story The Minority Report by Philip K Dick now I chose this one as it seems to tackle the problem of free will head-on and it's essentially a story about a police commissioner who in the futuristic world and they use uh, three computers to predict what will happen and they convict criminals based on future crimes that they'll commit. So it's kind of negating the idea of free will because it's, it's also saying that we can punish criminals for crimes they, they haven't committed yet. And I like this one because it, it also has the idea of responsibility involved and he also has to wrestle with the problem towards the end which I think is very... Um, salient in, in this philosophical discussion. He has to decide whether something, it, he chooses something that's above himself or if he tries to save himself. And I think that's quite an important distinction of why we have free will. We don't just do things for our own good, we do things for a higher purpose. Often, you know, whether it's a moral purpose, a rational purpose, free will is, is connected to this higher responsibility. And I think uh, the Minority Report gets this down in a very short story really well. Thank you for listening to Chairlift Philosophy. Hope to see you again next time. And don't forget to like and subscribe.